Good morning, we'll just give folks a minute to come in from the waiting room. Okay. And as a reminder, please mute yourself uh, when you are entering unless you are appearing or testifying before the board. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Wednesday, January 5th, 2022. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually today. Today's hearing will be recorded and posted on the City of Boston website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce Chairwoman Kathleen Joyce. Good morning, my name is Kathleen Joyce. Thank you for um, joining us today. I'm also joined by Commissioner Kiana Saxon and Commissioner Liam Curran. Thank you. And as a reminder, please do mute yourself currently uh, and unmute yourself only when you are appearing or testifying before the board. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on the agenda. I will then ask who is present on behalf of the applicant. You will then make a brief presentation regarding your proposal, followed by questions by the chairwoman and commissioners. Following the questions, there will be an opportunity uh, for testimony beginning with elected officials or their representatives. Please limit your testimony to two minutes. If you exceed two minutes, you may be muted. Uh, and before we begin with the first item on the agenda, I would just like to state that we received a request for a continuance uh, by council for item number 17, transfer from Donna Temple LLC doing business as Stoddard's Fine Food and Ale to uh, Real House Oyster Bar Seaport LLC located at 10 Waterside Drive. Uh, this request will for a continuance will be granted and will be continued to the next available hearing date, which is Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. So if you are here to testify on that today, um, please let us know. We will email everybody with that new hearing date, which will be January 26th, 2022. Now calling item number one on today's agenda, the Anthem Group Inc. doing business as the anchor located at 36 First Ave in Charlestown has applied for a calming vigiler license to be exercised on the above park concession stand with seated service and take out one shipyard park, Charlestown, Mass. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, this is Shelby Ello. I'm present on behalf of the anchor. Let me just go on, there you go, hi. Um, and then I have my colleague Chris on as well. I believe he, he just got on. Okay, great. Uh, you can begin as well. Okay, we are uh, simply looking to apply for a permanent CV to continue our concession operation over at the Anchor. It's classified as a beer and wine garden, performing arts venue, special event setting. Um, and we are going on to our fourth operating season, hopefully next year, or I suppose I should say this year. And we are simply looking to continue our existing concession operation. Um, thank you, Shelby. What kind of food will you be offering? Uh, is it the same that you've been doing before? Or are you expanding upon it? As of right now, the plan is to continue it relatively similar to what we're serving right now. Um, very concession style, sliders, tacos, soups, hot dog, uh, very basic. No hood, no grill, no anything like that. It's just everything is electric. Okay. And you've been there three years, so this will be your fourth season? Yes, coming up on it. Okay. Okay, I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I do not. No questions, thank you. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item number two, Cafe Iterum LLC, doing business as Cafe Iterum, located at 15 Monsignor Albert A. Jacoby Road in East Boston has applied for a common vitular license to be exercised on the above. One room on the ground floor corner cafe location, also to include outdoor patio year round on private property with seating for 50 patrons, the same hours as the cafe, also known as 15 Father Jacoby Road. Manager Matthew McPherson, hours of operation, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Uh, Matthew McPherson. Great, you may go ahead. Um, so we're looking for a food and, uh... A food license for the cafe, um, no alcohol, uh, opening at 6 a.m. to help uh, with a lot of the doctors and the uh, healthcare workers that are in the area. Uh, and then all the way to 9 p.m. Um, the food, we do have a full kitchen there, so it will be a full menu, uh, fast casual food, sandwiches, uh, grain bowl, salads, um, a full coffee bar as well. So coffee, uh, iced teas, teas, uh, espresso drinks, that type of thing. 
and then we be, because we do have a full patio on the outside we're going to try to do it as you know there are some nice days so we're trying to have the uh full year round patio as well uh when there's nice days out okay um have, are you up and operating now or is this going to be uh, a new... no this is this is a new location new location okay it's a brand new condo building so there was nothing previously there as uh, before it okay um commissioner Kern and commissioner saxon do you have any questions i don't thank you i do not thank you are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives Hi, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, I'm just speaking on behalf of my former colleague, Lena Tremelli, who want to acknowledge that this application has support from the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association, East Boston Main Streets, and many community members. But at this time, our office would like to defer it to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Um, yes, over here, Maria Eugenia Corvo. I'm here to testify for something else, but this is also in my neighborhood. I just want to give my full support to this application. It's a much needed uh, service coming to this area. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify? Nope. Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item number three, R.J. Hart, LLC, doing business as Mamola's Delicatessen, located at 100 High Street, has applied for a common vigilar license to be exercised on the above stall in a food hall. Manager, Alan Munzer, hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, who is present on behalf of the applicant? Good morning, uh, Mr. Green, Dennis Quilty, <clears throat> attorney representing the uh, High Street Place a licensee with us is Lauren Johnson, who's the uh, general manager of the uh, uh, licensee and Alon Munzer, who's the proposed manager of record. This is a one addition to the food hall at High Street Place, which the board has approved for multiple um, licenses under a management agreement for food and beverage. This will be a CV application only. Uh, and as the name would indicate, it is a delicatessen style uh, operation. Thank you. Um, and this is going to be seven days a week, 7 a.m. to 10? I believe so, yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? None for me. Thank you. I don't. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Uh, yep. I see Vanessa with a hand up. Hi, um, the, Madam Chair and members of the board. Um, this is Vanessa Wu from Councilor Flynn's office. Um, the councilor would like to go on record and support based on feedback from the downtown bid. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? My name is Alan from Mamos Delicatessen. I just want to say thanks for having us and we're excited to be a part of the Boston community. Great. Thank you. Seeing no further testimony, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item four, Delta Airlines Inc. doing business as Delta Sky Club located at Logan Airport Terminal A in East Boston has applied for a new common vigilar license to be exercised on the above. On the third floor of the satellite building of Terminal A, gate A17, containing nine rooms, a temporary bar and food service area. Manager Rebecca Basilla, hours of operation, 4.30 a.m. to 10 p.m. Attorney Joseph Devlin. Attorney Devlin, are you here? Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Elizabeth Pisano from Upton, Connell, and Devlin on behalf of the applicant, Delta Airlines. The proposed manager of record, Rebecca Basilla, is on here with me today. Uh, this application is for a common victualler's license located at Logan Airport Terminal A. Uh, this is part of a renovation at gate A17, which has been Massport's long-term plan for Delta. So they need a CV license to serve their customers. Um, they've operated in the, in the for many years. Attorney Devlin will be back to expand both the liquor and CV after their second phase of construction. But this application is just for the CV. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Kern. None for me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Right. The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item 5111 East Restaurant LLC, doing business as Lola Burger, located at 11 Fan Pier Boulevard, holder of a common vigiler seven day wines and malt beverages license, has petitioned to change the corporate name of the license business from 111 East Restaurant LLC, doing business as Lola Burger, to Lola Burger Boston Restaurant LLC, doing business as Lola Burger. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? I am Sean Morgan. Go ahead, Mr. Morgan. Uh, we are just seeking to change the corporate name as the restaurant concept changed. Um, I don't know what paperwork you'll need from us, but we're just looking to change the name. Everything else stays the same. Okay, Mr. Morgan, just to confirm for the record, there are no operational changes here? No. Okay, thank you. Commissioner Saxon or Curran, do you have any questions? None for me, thanks. No, thank you. Any individuals who wish to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item six, Seaport Food and Beverage LLC, located at 370 Congress Street, holder of a restricted in-holder all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change in officers, directors, LLC manager of the corporation. Attorney Brian Hughes. Attorney Hughes. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chairwoman and uh, fellow members of the board. Uh, I am here on behalf of Seaport Food and Beverage LLC. Thank you. Um, uh, before you is um, a more ministerial petition on the limited liability company manager of record with the Secretary of State, Mr. Elias Petruchus has left the company after many years of employment uh, with, with Seaport and its related companies. And Seaport seeks to appoint uh, two other managers in his stead, Mr. Patrick Carney Jr. and Mr. Fran Francis XJ Lynch. Um, they're long-term employees of the what we call the Claremont Companies, uh, which is uh, the controlling interest in Seaport Food and Beverage. Um, there is no uh, operational change here. And um, there's you know, nothing on the ground and no um, corporate change other than just who the LLC managers are with the Secretary of State. Thank you, Attorney Hughes. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? I don't, thank you. Okay, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Now calling item seven, Wahlburgers Fenway LLC, doing business as Wahlburgers, mm -hmm. located at 132 Brookline Ave, holder of a common vigiler seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned for a change of officers, directors of the corporation, and secondly, has petitioned for a change of ownership and stock interest. Attorney Marcy Costa. Attorney Costa. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Secretary. This is uh, Nick, Attorney Nick Sazula. Good morning, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm here uh, speaking on behalf of Attorney Costa. She's a uh, Luckily for her on vacation this week. Uh, Happy New Year to everybody. Um, this is for a uh, change of officers, directors, change in stock, and a change of ownership interest for Wahlburgers Fenway LLC. Um, similar to the uh, prior matter, um, this is an administrative um, application. Three current members of the licensee entity uh, have sold their shares in the licensee. Um, they have sold their interest to three other current interest holders. Um, and additionally, one new interest holder, uh, Mr. John Fuller, who has been disclosed in our application. Uh, there are no other changes to the operations of this license. Happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you, Attorney Zazula. I think you outlined that clearly for, for me. Uh, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Karn, do you have any questions? No questions. I do not. Thank you. Okay, are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Okay, any additional individuals? I see Alex Sachinets with a hand up. Would you like to testify on this matter? Hey, good morning. Yes, my name is Alex Sachinets. I'm a board member of the Fenway Civic Association. Um, just wanted to take this opportunity to comment uh, and ask whether there would be any operational changes, day-to-day -day changes. Um, the FCA did meet with uh, the, the current or the, you know, the 
Wahlberger's ownership at the time when the location opened, I believe it was 2014, um, we did ask them to uh, closely monitor the amplified outdoor music. This is a common request that FCA makes of new businesses coming into the area. Uh, and we did have um, a, a few years worth of, of complaints and uh, some wrangling with the Wahlburgers trying to make sure that their amplified outdoor music was not becoming uh, you know, an unnecessary, uh, uh, you know, nuisance to the neighborhood. And especially when uh, we have several restaurants that are right next to each other, all competing to, to try to have their music heard. Um, so uh, at, we, we did notice that that frequently happened with changes in management, changes in ownership. Um, so uh, if the, if this petition will mean some kind of operational or, or day-to-day -day change for Wahlburgers, We'd be curious to know if the the new ownership will you know uphold that same promise to FCA and if you, they would be willing to to come and meet with FCA again like the the previous ownership did. Thanks, uh, Attorney Green. Can I respond or would you? Yep. If you have a Thank if you. you have a response, please do. Yeah, Alex. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for um, joining. There are no operational changes. There's no change to the manager of record. There's no change to the ownership or the people who will be there on a daily basis. So. Um, to directly answer the question that there'll be no operational changes um, at Fenway as far as the amplified music is concerned. Um, you know, where we, um, our office knows the folks and you all at FCA, we're happy to reach out and have a discourse if you'd like us to, but there'll be no operational changes as part of this application. It's just administrative. Okay. okay. Yeah, I appreciate the answer. Um, Absolutely. I mean, just to satisfy my own personal curiosity, I would be remiss if I, if I didn't ask. Is it the, the Wahlberg family themselves that are divesting their shares? I'm just curious. No. Oh, okay. All right, great no, to know. My, my, mine, I would categorize it, Alex, as minor interest holders who are selling their shares to, I believe actually they're, they're getting greater shares in the, in, in the entity. Understood. So, yep. Very good. Thanks for your time. You're welcome. Thank you, Attorney Zazula. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Uh, and now calling item number eight, similar to item number seven uh, with a few changes, Wahlburgers South Bay Company LLC doing business as Wahlburgers located at 9 District Ave in Dorchester. Holder of a South Bay restricted common vigilar seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned for a change of officers directors of the corporation. Secondly, has petitioned for a change of ownership and stock interest. Lastly, has petitioned to change the manager of the license business from John Rogan to James Smith Jr. Um, Attorney Sazula, I believe this is you as well. Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Uh, good morning, uh, Madam Chair. Again, members of the board, Attorney Nick Sazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller uh, here on behalf of Wahlberger South Bay Company, LLC. Um, as read into the record, this is uh, another similar change. In this, in this case, uh, the licensee's 100% interest holder, uh, which is uh, Wahlberger's uh, Boston Developer Company, LLC. They have had a change of ownership and similarly stock between its members. Um, in this case, two members have sold their interest in the entity to two current members. Um, on the manager of record application, um, we are seeking to change the manager of record uh, to, uh, from John Rogan to James Smith Jr. Uh, Mr. Smith is uh, here on video and um, um, uh, available to answer any questions, but uh, in, in brief, um, he's been with Wahlberger since 2020. Uh, he has several years experience in the food and beverage industry, both with Wahlburgers uh, and previously. Um, he's a citizen of the United States. He's a resident of Massachusetts living in Andover, and he's over 21 years of age. Um, so that would encapsulate the application, both uh, from the, the uh, administrative change on the licensee interest holders, as well as the uh, requested change for the manager of record. Happy to answer any questions you may have on this one as well. Uh, thank you, Attorney Zazula. Just the uh, final question for the manager of record, Mr. Smith, I think I see you. Do you have experience? I mean, I'm sorry, you, your attorney already described your experience, but are you familiar with the rules and regs of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Thank you. Um, with that, I have no further questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Nothing further, thank you. I do not, thank you. Okay. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you, have a good day. Thank you. And you. Now calling item nine, Stage Karaoke LLC, located at 138 Brighton Avenue in Alston, holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from in one large room on second floor with bar, seating area and stage, kitchen and 11 smaller individual rooms for karaoke. Two, in one large room on second floor with bar, seating area and stage, restrooms, kitchen and storage and 12 smaller individual rooms for karaoke. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Good morning, Attorney Green, uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, Dennis Quilty representing the licensee. I believe Henry Wong is with us. I saw him pop up yes, earlier. Yes, I'm here. There he is. Henry's the owner and operator. And um, as you can see from the um, description that Mr. Green just read, this is a change to include one additional karaoke room. There are no other uh, operational changes in this uh, application. And we have uh, been fully vetted in the neighborhood process and have been supported uh, for this application. So it literally is the addition of one, one room for uh, folks to engage in the karaoke, you know, in these individual rooms. And that's it. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions. Attorney Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Carran, do you? I do not. Great. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item number 10, 378 Center Street, Inc. doing business as the Brendan BN Pub, located at 378 A Center Street in Jamaica Plain. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to amend the description of the license business from one main room on ground floor, approximately 1,000 square feet. Cellar for storage, approximately 2,200 square feet. Seasonal outdoor patio in rear of premises, approximately 850 square feet from April to October on private property. Two, one main room on ground floor, approximately 1,000 square feet in one room on first floor. Cellar for storage, approximately 2,200 square feet. Year round outdoor patio in rear of premises, approximately 850 square feet on private property. Patio closing hour, 10 p.m. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee logged on with us today is owner of the Brendan Bean Pub, uh, Michelle Soltani. Um, the proposal before you this morning is to simply change the existing um, back outdoor patio from seasonal to annual. Um, by way of background, just so the board is aware, Mr. Soltani is a longtime business um, owner and community leader in Mission Hill. Um, he previously had Mission Bar and Grill on Huntington Ave. He's very well liked, fantastic reputation as a civic minded and transparent business owner. Um, this particular pub has been in existence for 30 plus years, um, anchor business of Hyde Square in JP for decades. Um, Mr. Sultani purchased the business in 2007 and actually purchased the building itself in 2017. Um, with, we did, regarding this proposal, we did meet um, with a Butters, um, I believe only the mayor's office uh, attended and also met with the JPNC. Both were, um, who were supportive of the proposal and I believe the board has received numerous letters of support from a Butters nearby residents and local businesses as well. Other than the change to um, the annual rear patio, there's no other changes proposed uh, for this license. Okay, thank you. Um, now, this is, this patio has been out, out there for a while, right? A couple of years now, yeah. Okay, it's not something that was new with the uh, temporary um, program. No, it happened kind of around the same time. I'm losing track okay. of time, but what we had gone to zoning to to permit and everything before COVID, but it kind okay. of all happened around the same time. I do remember this because we have gotten a lot of letters of support and people who have reached out on this. Um, I remember it, from, it corresponding with the temporary program. Right. Um, right. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you? I don't, thank you. Okay. Are there any individuals who would like to testify in this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? 
Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Uh, Molly Griffin, from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services, speaking on behalf of my colleague, Tiffany Caballero. Um, just to re reiterate what Attorney Scanlon mentioned, there was an abutters meeting held on October 7th. Only three people in attendance, including Tiffany, uh, Attorney Scanlon, and the owner. She sent the recordings um, of the meeting to constituents, but has not received any letters of opposition since the beginning of that community process. At this time, our office would like to defer the decision to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Uh, I see a hand raised by Michael Reiskind. Yep, yeah. my name is Michael Reiskind. I live at uh, 425 South Huntington Avenue in Jamaica Plain. I'm a member of the Jamaica Plain Neighborhood Council and chair of its public service committee. Uh, we had a hearing on the neighborhood hearing on this issue via Zoom on November 9th, 2021. And we urge you to support this, uh, this request. Um, the uh, back patio has been in existence since the application in uh, April, 2020. Uh, there's uh, practically no change except for the additional months of use. We, um, we did consider one letter from a nearby abutter that opposed it saying this was a major expansion and would affect the already uh, bad parking at the corner of Center Street and Sheridan Street. Uh, but um, the um, neighborhood council's committee feels this was not really an expansion and, and uh, there was numerous um, testimony that the parking was due to other businesses. So all in all, we urge you to uh, uh, support this uh, request for additional months of use of the existing patio. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item 11, Cafe Bonjour Inc. Doing business as Cafe Bonjour located at 55 Temple Place holder of a restricted common victual seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to change the classification of its license to wines, malt beverages and liqueurs pursuant to the authority contained in chapter 481 of the acts of 1994. Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. Good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon representing the licensee. I'm not sure if um, the owner, Dreso Mockery has signed on with us or the landlord, um, Sarah Vazirani, but um, those are the representatives from the um, business and the establishment. Um, as far as the proposal is concerned, we're seeking to add cordials to the existing beer and wine license that was granted um, at the beginning of last year. Um, by way of background and after a significant revival of this space, which is the former Singer Sewing Building in Downtown Crossing, Cafe Bonjour first opened in December of 2019. Um, Barely three months into the business, obviously COVID began and no one of course is a stranger to how that's affected the restaurant industry. Um, but the landlord um, in conjunction with the owner, cause he obviously wanted to see the business that had just uh, painstakingly re revised the space um, and opened this business kind of um, did, the, did the best they could and started various programs to um, get involved in the community, including adopt a doc, adopt a nurse programs. Um, they've been a fantastic neighbor and delivering and donating upwards of 10,000 meals to local hospitals, fire department, churches, um, things of that nature. Um, so they've really uh, committed themselves to the neighborhood and have, have been a gem and a great addition to it. Um, the cafe itself is approximately 1400 square feet with 19 seats. Um, there will be no changes proposed to operations other than the addition of cordials. Um, as far as public need is concerned for this, patrons have indicated it'd be great to um, have a little bit um, more of an elevated uh, brunch or lunch option for cocktail offerings on the menu. Um, and this is a location that is um, really become a beloved spot and a unique one. There's not much around there that serves breakfast um, all day uh, for the neighborhood. Uh, we did meet with the uh, Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association and downtown uh, BID who were all in strong support of this proposal. And at this time, happy to answer any questions or concerns the board might have regarding the addition of cordials. 
Um, thank you, Attorney Scanlon. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Carr, do you? I do not, thank you. Thank you. I don't either, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other, ah, yes, Vanessa, go ahead. Hi, good, good morning, Madam Chair and members of the board, Vanessa Wu from Councillor Flynn's office. Um, would like to go on record and support based on feedback from Downtown Bid, Downtown Boston Residents Association and Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Yes, good morning, Danny. Good morning, Madam Chair, board members. This is Mary Higgins. I'm representing the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association. We'd like to go on record in support of this application. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? The board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item 12, the Wine Bar LLC, doing business as 49 Social, located at 49 Temple Place, holder of a common vigil or seven-day all-alcoholic beverages license, has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to K&K Restaurant Group, Inc., doing business as Estella at the same location. Manager Helder Brandeo, closing hour 2 a.m., Attorney Adam Barnowski. Attorney Barnowski. Thank you, Mr. Green. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Adam Barnowski, 255 State Street in Boston, on behalf of the applicant. With me is Helder Brandeo, the principal owner and manager of record, and Joseph DePina, who is the operations manager. We're here regarding a same location transfer of an all alcoholic beverage license, which was previously held by the wine bar uh, at the same location operating as 49 Social. The property is located in the heart of downtown Crossing near the intersection of Washington and Temple. It's located on the first two floors of a mixed use building. Can, uh, which consists of a restaurant and office uses. It's approximately 4,000 square feet of space with seating for 150 patrons, seeking a closing hour of 2 a.m., seven days a week. This will be primarily a dinner destination. However, all floors will be open for food between 11 a.m. and 2 a.m. The upper level will be occasionally reserved for corporate and private events. Uh, and we are having some discussions about uh, options for breakfast, depending on the uh, demand and inter interest of the neighborhood and customer base. The manager of record is Helder Brandeo, who goes by George. He uh, has extensive business experience in Boston. He's owned several businesses and, and run them successfully uh, in the area. Our resume was provided as part of the application uh, package, uh, which details his experience. He will be on site 40 plus hours a week. Mr. DePino will serve as the operations manager, and we anticipate that uh, during the initial stages of, of opening this restaurant, we'll bring in uh, Mr. DePino on a, a change of manager application, and he will oversee the operation on a day-to-day -day basis once the uh, business is up and running. From a licensing perspective, while the concept is new in name, the use and operation will be similar to the prior restaurant that was on site, similar hours, seating, and uh, customer base, there's no intensification of use here. There's no increase in the occupancy or seating. There will be some aesthetic changes to the restaurant, but no major construction. Uh, the applicant anticipates opening sometime this winter or early spring, depending on the approval process. Uh, George, Joe, and his team have met extensively uh, with the community groups, including uh, members of Council Flynn's office, Downtown Bid, uh, MPPNA, and the Office of Neighborhood Services. Happy to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Um, I don't have it here in front of me. How many seats at this location? Uh, I believe the seating is 150 and occupancy is 251. Okay. Um, and Mr. Brandeo, are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Uh, yes. Are you familiar with Joe is Joe has a plethora of experience. Okay. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Okay. And just uh, for clarification, is are you look going for an entertainment license here? Yes. Okay. I will discuss that at a different time, but okay. Um, I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Carr, do you? 
Okay. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, just to reiterate what Attorney Barnowski mentioned, the applicant met with Councilor Flynn's office, the downtown bid, the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association, and with my colleague, John Romano um, from LNS. Uh, at this time, our office would like to defer this decision to the board. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Vanessa. Sorry, Vanessa from Councillor Flynn's office would like to um, go on record and support based on a thorough community process and feedback from Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association, Downtown Bid, Downtown Residents Association. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Uh, Danny, yes, I would. Go ahead. <laughs> Good morning again. Good morning, Madam Chair, board members. This is Mary Higgins. I'm representing the Midtown Park Plaza Neighborhood Association. And um, I would like to go on record that we did poll our members um, and they did provide uh, support for this uh, transfer of our liquor license. I do also wanna include just some concerns from the members prior to taking that vote. Um, given that this space will be open 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. seven days a week and there are three different levels, the upper, the main, and the lower level. I understand this isn't for an entertainment license, but I do understand they are applying for the same type of entertainment um, in this space that is that currently exists. Uh, we just wanna make sure that this stays predominantly as a restaurant, operating as a restaurant, even though there may be some entertainment going on in the lower level. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to provide testimony on this item? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item 13, Equator Inc. doing business as Equator, located at 1721 Washington Street in Roxbury. Holder of a common vigiler seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to P&Y Ventures, Inc., doing business as Yunnan Kitchen at the same location. Yisha Zhu Su, manager, 11 p.m. closing hour. Attorney Mei Hui Hu. Attorney Hu. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Attorney Green. Good morning, um, Madam Chairman and the uh, member of the board. Uh, I represent the applicant uh, for the transfer from Ecuador to P&Y Venture, Inc. Um, the uh, principal and the proposed manager, Yi Xia Xu. She's also here with me today. I didn't see her. Uh, yes, I'm here. Okay, great. Um, the the uh, husband and wife team, uh, Yi Xia Xu and her husband, Patrick, they have been operating a successful restaurant out of Brighton. And uh, for the last five years, uh, they also at that Brighton location had a, a beer and wine license as well. And I think uh, the husband wife team, uh, yeah. this is their second business. And uh, with the same concept, it's gonna be a noodle studio with uh, um, alcohol license, beer and wine service uh, to enhance the, uh, 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 the, the menu they're serving and um, uh, uh, Ms. Xu Isha, um, she has experience in operating in that current restaurant and uh, the, the new restaurant. She is also taken up the uh, tips training. And um, so I uh, highly recommend her. We also went through the um, neighborhood process, vetting process. We have uh, received over overwhelming positive um, review from uh, the Neighborhood Association. And we're here to answer any question the board might have. Thank you very much, Attorney. <clears throat> Just a couple um, manager of record questions to make sure we get on the record for Ms. Shu. Are you a citizen? Yes, I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes, I am. And are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the um, laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, thank you. I probably should have asked this at the outset. Are, are you already approved manager by this board? Uh, yes, uh, I'm certified. Okay, all right, thank you very much. I don't have any questions, Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran? Nothing further, thank you. Nothing for me, thank you. 
Are there uh, any sorry for interruption. Uh, sorry, Attorney Green. Sorry, I forgot to mention one thing. We actually submitted two applications. One with the uh, CV license with the alcohol license, which will be if the board approve us, we'll go to ABCC for further approval. We also asked for a, submitted another application without alcohol license, and uh, hopefully this will get approved and we can open the business without alcohol license as we waiting for the ABCC approval. Okay. Great. Thank you for that. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now calling items 14 and 15 as they concern the same licensee uh, transferring to the same applicant. Item 14, UMNVAG Kenmore LLC, located at 528 Commonwealth Ave. And item 15, UMNVAG Kenmore LLC, located at 498 Commonwealth Ave. Holder of a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license from the above to BR Kenmore LLC doing business as Blue Ribbon Brasserie, Blue Ribbon Sushi, Pescador at the same location. Robert Allen Anderson, Jr. Manager, closing hour 2 a.m. Lastly, has petitioned to pledge the license to UMNVAG Kenmore. Attorney Dennis Quilty. Attorney Quilty. Thank you, Attorney Green. Uh, good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is the, uh, I think, long awaited revitalization of these spaces in the Hotel Commonwealth in the heart of Kenmore Square. Uh, these uh, applications, these locations were formerly the well-known uh, Eastern Standard at the 528 Commonwealth Avenue end of the building and the former Island Creek Oyster Bar at the 498 Commonwealth Avenue end of the building. You may recall that we were in front of you uh, in the recent past to transfer from those entities to the current holder of the license, UMNVAG Kenmore LLC, which is the uh, basically the landlord and suggested to you at that time that we would indeed be transferring out to a new operator as soon as possible. Uh, we have gone through this with the uh, local organizations, Kenmore Residents, Kenmore Association, Mayor's Office, Councilor Bach, uh, and everyone is fully aware and understanding of uh, what these applications are. We propose to bring uh, a new first class operator, the Blue Ribbon Group, uh, who will operate at the uh, 528 location, the, their brasserie and sushi concepts, uh, and at the uh, 498 location, Pescador, which is a seafood operation. Uh, so our, our hope is that when uh, we are ready to go, these uh, licenses and these restaurants will again revitalize this portion of Kenmore Square. And um, hopefully this is the start of uh, restaurants coming out of COVID, let's hope. Well, we have Mr. Anderson is here as the manager of record. Um, I know Mr. Jammin is here representing the current licensee and certainly we're available for any questions you might have. Thank you, Attorney Quilty. Just because we're on Zoom, uh, could Mr. Andrew, I don't see him on my page. If you could just say his name, maybe it'll pop up on my computer screen. Actually, Mr. Anderson, are you here? Yes. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. This is Rob Anderson. There you are. Glad to see you. This is Rob. Okay. Um, are you already a, a, an approved manager of record by this board? I'm an approved safety manager. I'm not sure what by this board means. Okay. But in the state of Massachusetts, I am. Okay. I just wanted to, I didn't want to repeat the manager of record questions if we had already approved you for a different location, but I will um, go through them for both 14 and 15. Are you a citizen? Yes. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? Yes. Do you have experience in the food and beverage industry? Yes. Are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes. Great. Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions. Um, I think this neighborhood will be looking forward to these places reopening. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Nothing further, thank you. I do not, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning <laughs> with elected officials or their representatives? 
are there any other individuals who would like to testify on these uh, items? No, seeing none, the board will take these items under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now calling item 16, Baked Daily Corporation doing business as Panificio located at 144 to 162 Charles Street, holder of a common victual seven day wines and malt beverages license has petitioned to transfer the license and the location from the above to Immersive Art Space Boston LLC located at 130 Columbus Avenue, Saunders Castle at Park Plaza. The premises consist of approximately 14,642 square feet of exhibition space on the first floor, main entrance on Columbus Avenue, restrooms on first floor with additional restroom and basement, retail area and bar area, three exits to alleyway, exit at rear, two exits on Columbus Ave, closing hour 11 p.m. Secondly, has petitioned to change the license category and type from a Section 12 restaurant common vigil or seven day wines and malt beverages license to a Section 12 general on premises wine and malt beverages with liqueurs. Maria Schlover, manager, attorney Patricia Farnsworth. Attorney Farnsworth. Good morning. Uh, thank you, Attorney Green. Trish Farnsworth with Lawson and Whiteson in Boston. Good morning, Madam Chair and members. Um, with me as well is Maria Slover. Um, you see her, she's the producer and a partner um, in Immersive Arts Space Boston. And she will also be the um, proposed manager on the license. And also with us today is Dasha Carroll. She's a director of special events and also a project manager. So this is a license transfer to this location. And just to set up the location, it's the, the castle at Park Plaza. There's two spaces there. You may remember Smith and Walensky's was in uh, one space that is separate. That's not the space at issue here. This is a, um, a, a separate event space that Immersive Art Space Boston is going to lease. And we're seeking the beer and wine license and actually a cordial as well. Um, this is an immersive art experience and Maria and Dasha can explain uh, a little bit more, but they've put on, you know, at least 20 of these events throughout North America. Um, I think there's one here in Boston that you've probably seen a lot of ads for the Van Gogh. Um, so it's, uh, you know, it's a ticketed event. Uh, folks go in, they spend about 60 to 90 minutes, um, you know, in this immersive um, space. And the plan is to start with Frida Kahlo, uh, the Mexican artist. And all tickets are sold online, you know, they're timed. So there's control with that. Uh, they will um, probably have, you know, some corporate events, um, some other um, kind of group sales where they would be selling to students or, you know, art teachers, things like that. Um, so they, they've done this in Chicago and New York, uh, very familiar with how to, you know, operate safely, especially with COVID. Um, and also just, you know, with um, having, you know, folks, uh, the number of folks that will come through and just kind of keep it in an organized way. Um, the reason why they want the beer and wine license is um, it's just really an amenity so that when someone comes in, they can have a drink um, before they go into the gallery itself. Um, they, this is not a restaurant, so we are seeking a general on-premise license. There's no food preparation on site, but there will be prepackaged food available. Uh, for purchase so folks can you know get their glass of wine or beer enjoy that and then go through the exhibit space um, and then when they exit they exit you know in a separate exit area there will be a retail shop so it's not that they come back and then have another drink or anything like that um, so it's I you know similar to kind of the wang where you go see a show at intermission you go out you have a drink you go back in um, but they, you know, will probably want to do use this license as well for, you know, a corporate event or some other event. So that's why um, the license uh, we would seek. Um, the, we have met with the Bay Village Neighborhood Association. I, I know Sarah's on and we're, you know, working out a, um, you know, the good neighbor agreement. Um, you know, they're 
concerns with hours and all. What we're seeking is a midnight actually closing hour for Friday and Saturday. And um, Bay Village would like it just be 11, their, their standard time for the other, the other days of the week. Um, so Maria is, she, you have her resume, but she's, you know, been involved in this business, is a partner in the business, um, has been on a liquor license, I, I believe in Chicago. She can tell you more about her experience, but she does live in Connecticut. She will be relocating here. She has a place to live here. So she will be on the, ma the manager on the license here, get this you know, up and running and, you know, be hands on. And then it probably at some point we may be back to, um, you know, appoint, a, you know, a, a different general manager for the license. But for purposes of now, um, it's Maria. So I think maybe I can turn it to Maria and she can tell a little bit more about her experience and, um, you know, hit on things I didn't talk about with respect to the whole concept. Thank you, Trish. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Maria Shkrover and I'm a producer of Immersive Van Gogh and Immersive Frida Experiences. Uh, by the way, just wanted to clarify, we are not the ones um, already in Boston. It's a competitor, it's like uh, the other business. So if you've heard about Immersive Van Gogh in Boston, that's not us. Um, we've been uh, open since pandemic in, uh, started in Chicago. And uh, since then, uh, uh, during this year, we opened about 20 uh, different immersive uh, experiences um, um, in the United States and um, uh, in New York and Chicago and uh, you name it. Um, and we've been very successful. Uh, we run um, liquor license and uh, the bar um, in Chicago and New York uh, successfully. So people buy a drink and go to see the art exhibit. The um, tickets are timed and uh, the experience is very um, uh, creative. It created created by uh, Italian designers and Italian artists based on the, um, in, in, in this Boston instance, it's on the paintings of the Mexican um, artist Frida Kahlo. Uh, and we are very excited to be in Boston um, and uh, hope um, that the community would be happy to have us. Uh, thank you. So, um... I'm sorry, Attorney Farnsworth, do you have more to present? No, no that's fine. Questions. Okay. So just to clarify for myself, the people will be purchasing and consuming the alcohol in one, one defined space for purposes of the rotating exhibits. They won't be walking through the exhibit space, but you'll also be using this liquor license for private events in another space. Yeah. Not in, in um, the same space. Same space. Okay. If you have. If we have a, I mean, it's a, it's a drill hole. So it's about 15,000 square feet. Okay. Uh, it's called the drill hole. Uh, so people will enter. The floor would be, you enter, you um, pass the bar. Whoever wants to have a drink, they can buy a drink. Then they will go to the exhibit. They will never come back to the um, bar area after that because the floor goes to the store, uh, through different experiences uh, within the exhibit and to the exit. Okay, um, and when do you plan on moving to Boston? Do you have a lease already in Boston? We have a lease. Um, the, do, you have, um, do you personally, do you personally when you're oh, living? Me, yes, you I have a family Boston. house. My family lives in um, uh, Newton, 18 Harvard Road. So I'm uh, in and out all the time. So um, I'm going to be in Boston at the end of this week and stay uh, indefinitely until the business is up and running, uh, hopefully six so you, months. So you are moving to Boston? Yes, I am. At the end of this week. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, and you're familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC, and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Saxon and Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? You might have answered this before, but how large is the area where the drinks are going to be served? How large? I mean. Yes, I can that. address that. Um, the bar is planned as a dry bar. It's going to consist of uh, one or two six foot panels with storage underneath, and it'll be on a rubberized surface. It'll be sort of a setup that's ready to be put away. 
so that it can be set up and broken down um, each night. So it's about a six to 12 foot counter and the area uh, around it to allow for queuing, but it'll happen at the entrance to the gallery. So people will pass through it as they walk in. Thank you. And just one final question, not to jump in front of you, Commissioner Curran, but um, we have four total manager of record questions. I just want to make sure I cover them all for the public record. Are you a citizen? Yes. Okay, great. Commissioner Curran, to you. Not at the moment. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Hi, yes. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Kim Fusioli with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Um, the applicants received no opposition from the community and they went before the Bay Village Neighborhood um, Life Sustain Planning Committee um, and they were non opposed as well. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the board on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, Vanessa, go ahead. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Vanessa from Councillor Flynn's office would like to go on record and support based on the non-opposition from Bay Village Neighborhood Association and a tentative community agreement on quality of life issues such as closing time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? I see Sarah Hurley yes, with a hand raised. Yeah, so Sarah Hurley on behalf of the Bay Village Neighborhood Association. Um, this is a little bit of a, a new and unusual space for this particular um, building, or new, a new and unusual use for this particular building. It's a long-term exhibit. I believe what was represented to us is that the intent is for people to be able to pick up a, a drink and walk through this space. Um, we have reached an agreement on hours, which is that you know Sunday through Thursday, it would be an 11 p.m. closing time with liquor stopping at 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, a 11 p.m. liquor service end time and a midnight closing time with the understanding that they may come back for particular licenses for special events, but that those would be the hours. So we would ask that any vote be subject to those hours. We would also be uh, asked that they, um, the board subject any vote to the good neighbor agreement, which I believe we are finalizing um, very shortly. The one issue that has been raised by the presentation by the um, attorney and the, the applicant is that they are seeking a cordial license. Um, when they came before us on December 21st, the representation is that they were not clear that they were gonna seek a cordial license, but then they started talking about doing, you know, drinks involving tequila because it is a Frito Kala exhibit and that would be a, a, a logical co-sponsor. Um, we do not support a cordial license, the expansion of this to a cordial license at this point in time without further discussions. I do think that that would be appropriate for them to operate for a period of time in this very kind of novel concept for the space and for our neighborhood, and then come back to seek an extension for a cordial license. Um, again, somebody talking about tequila on a cordial license concerns us. Um, and this is an operator that hasn't operated in the area before in a new space and a new, a new program. And again, we are talking about, you know, tens of thousands of square feet, I believe, for people to be wandering around with a cocktail. It's a large capacity potential for, you know, potential for it to go bad. If they're a great operator, we certainly won't oppose an expansion. But at this point in time, I think the, the beer and wine we would support um, subject to our agreement and the hours we've agreed upon, the cordial we, we have concerns about. Right. I think the, I think the, the idea of tequila came up just because of the Mexican, you know, artists, but tequila is a liquor. I mean, that's an alcohol. I mean, that wouldn't be under the cordial license, but it's, I mean, that's fine. I'm sure, you know, we can work with beer and wine and if we need, or if there is some sponsor or some reason to go with a cordial, um, you know, we could do that, you know, later, but yeah, that I was not. Have, I also okay. want to bring uh, to your attention that the, the official capacity of this building is 2000, uh, given by the city of the Boston. Um, we are only doing time admission by uh, for 250 people an hour. So not 2000, but 250. So you would understand that, you know, the capacity is much, much lower than allowed by the city of Boston. But special so events could go larger, I would imagine. I'm sorry? No, we're it's, concerned it's, about special events, et cetera. Special events are not, our main, um, main purpose of this whole business is to present the art exhibit and the new way of uh, um, presenting art. So we are the museum of immersive art. We are not liquor 
uh, <laughs> license is just uh, to go with it. Right. So that is to say that any special events that we hold in the space will be in conjunction with the exhibit and will involve the exhibit and may take place during uh, show hours or as a buyout, but within, you know, normal confines. So we're not planning to kind of hold a rager. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you all. Hey, thanks for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And for those who may have missed the announcement at the beginning of the hearing, item number 17 has been uh, rescheduled due to a request from the applicant for further community process. Um, this will be continued to the next transactional hearing, which will be Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. Now calling item 18, Verpa Corp, doing business as Square Bites, located at 38 Maverick Square in East Boston, has applied for a retail package store wines and malt beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premises is a one-story pre-existing structure containing approximately 3,335 square feet. 1,528 square feet in the storefront and 1,807 square feet in the basement used for dry storage. Manager Adisha Patel, closing time 11 p.m. Attorney Jeffrey Drago. Good morning, Attorney Green. Good morning, go ahead. Chair, members of the board, uh, Attorney Matt Eckel from Drago and Toscano on behalf of Virpa Corp. Also with me is Adisha Patel, the proposed Manager of record. As mentioned, we are seeking a wine and malt beverages package license for a new retail market to be known as Square Bites at 38 Maverick Square. The premises to be licensed is located on the first floor of an existing building with storage space in the basement. Uh, this store is proposing to offer general groceries, including uh, fruits, vegetables, cheeses, crackers, box goods, uh, and if approved by this board, a, a wide variety of, of beers, craft beer, uh, wines, etc. Uh, we believe this is an appropriate location for a package license as the market's going to serve both uh, general pedestrian customers uh, within the greater Maverick Square neighborhood, uh, as well as patrons using public transportation as we are just steps away from the Maverick Square MBTA station. Uh, as mentioned, the proposed manager of record is Disha Patel, who is a citizen of the U.S. and a mass resident. She's also familiar with the rules and regulations for selling alcohol. Uh, finally, we did do a full community process. Uh, we had held in a butters meeting as well as appeared before the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association. Uh, we did submit 140 letters of support as well as a letter of support from the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association after we appeared before them. Uh, so with that, I'll pause and, and happily take any questions from the board. Um, thank you, attorney. Thank you for um, covering the, the manager of record questions. Just to make sure we have it on the public record, is Ms. Patel familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, yes I do. Okay, thank you. Could you um, focus or narrow in a little bit more on the public need for this type of license at this location? Sure, so, so it is a, a new retail market. Um, there, there is a liquor store um, kind of across Maverick Square on the other side of the MBTA station. Yes. We are not seeking, obviously, a full package license. We want to open this as kind of an art market, as I mentioned, with cheese and crackers, and we want to be able to pair that with cheese and wine. Um, the 140 letters of support, I think, definitely signify that there is a need for this and, and a desire to have additional options to kind of one-stop shop, uh, you know, for both your groceries and for, for beer and wine. Okay. Thank you for um, elaborating. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Nothing further. Thank you. Uh, this time. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes. Good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board, Molly Griffin with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Speaking on behalf of my colleague, Nina Tremelli, um, there was an abutters meeting held through our office. I apologize. I don't know the exact date of the meeting. Um, and they, this applicant has received support from the Maverick Central Neighborhood Association. There were some concerns about having another place that sells alcohol in Maverick Square with the other uh, package store across the way and many bars. Um, at this time, our office would like to defer this decision to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 
Now calling item 19, a Wilbur Collective LLC doing business as Pearl and Lime located at 99 to 101 Border Street in East Boston has applied for a common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above. Premises is comprised of 3,626 square feet on one floor with one entrance and four exits. 3,071 square feet inside and 555 square feet outdoor annual patio property with 40 seats. Hours of outdoor patio, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Manager of Annie Kakobian, closing time, 1 a.m., Attorney Andrew Upton. Attorney Upton. Uh, good morning, everyone. Andrew Upton for the applicant, and with me are Van Eek, uh, the proposed manager of record, as well as his uh, partner, owner, and operators. We're asking for a new all-alcohol license for this exciting concept in East Boston. Pearl and Lime is a fresh pan-Latin concept with a neighborhood price point and a commitment to being part of the community. Fresh food and a comfortable modern atmosphere and decor will be the calling cards of this new neighborhood restaurant. The character and fitness of this applicant is clear. This is the team that's behind Pearl and Lime in Quincy. In Quincy, they're a family friendly, fresh pan Latin concept that has become a neighborhood fixture and that has had no violations or complaints from their neighbors. They've proven this concept and are excited about this East Boston location. Uh, further, their landlord, NOAA, which stands for Neighborhood of Affordable Housing, is an affordable housing developer and the developer has chosen this team due to their sensitivity to the residents, the neighbors and the community. Uh, Vanik Hagopian will be the manager of record. He has extensive experience in the industry. He's a lifelong East Boston resident, uh, except when he was a professional skateboarder in California for a few years. Um, and he and his family are part owners of this restaurant. He's a US citizen, a mass resident. He's got plenty of experience and he is familiar with the rules and regulations. Uh, there's also a strong public need for a license at this location. Um, there's an obvious economic need for a license to support a moderately priced restaurant. There's a landlord who selected these operators as the best candidates to run a restaurant at this space. In the last couple of years, there was another proposed office operator who would not commit to a food first neighborhood concept and could not generate enough support for their application. Pearl and Lime has gotten unanimous support from the MCNA, and we have not received any opposition thus far. Uh, we have also submitted a letter of support from City Councilor Lydia Edwards, also known as Senator-elect Lydia Edwards, and from Representative Adrian Madaro. Uh, I just want to mention that we've told the neighbors uh, during our outreach that we are not creating a nightclub, we're not having a dance floor, we're not featuring any live bands, and we're not catering to a sports bar type crowd. We are only gonna be applying for non-live entertainment that will include TVs and background music. Uh, now I'd like to have Vanique describe a few of the details of the restaurant. Uh, we've submitted a PowerPoint to the board, but he'll summarize that to save time. But uh, if you wanna flip through it, it has some good pictures and descriptions. Of course, we're glad to answer any questions at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, members of the board, for hearing us out. Um, my name is Vani Kakobian. Uh, I'm a lifelong resident of East Boston, originally growing up in the Eagle Hill neighborhood. And I, uh, for the past 20 or so years, I've been residing in Jeffreys Point, uh, during which this, all this time I have been in the hospitality industry. Um, and going back to when I first was in the Jeffreys Point neighborhood, um, I, I met one of my partners, Devin Adams, and I actually started shopping the idea of opening a place in East Boston that long ago, but it was long before it was ready and as developed as, as it is to this day. Um, and my main goal, not only is it a dream to have a restaurant in my neighborhood, but it's to provide something that we, we don't really get um, as industry workers, um, living in East Boston and more and more industry workers are living in East Boston these days. And we would like to provide the same type of service that we offer to our guests in East Boston, rather than have to, having to stay in Boston and dine out in Boston, then pay for an Uber to come home rather than, you know, being able to get, get something in the neighborhood that we live, we live in. Um, when Devin and his partner Palmer opened Pearl and Lime in Quincy, uh, their second restaurant during the pandemic, it was an immediate hit. And me living in East Boston, my family and I would travel all the way to Quincy to get this experience that they are offering. And 
with the opportunity that NOAA has offered us in this building, um, we wanna bring this to East Boston and we don't wanna take away from the already huge Latin population there is, we wanna to add to it and provide a type of atmosphere that will kind of take, give, give the guests, guests an experience of escapism when they come in. We are offering a type of Latin cuisine, tapas cuisine that you know covers Mexican, Central American, some South American, um, all kind of ranging, you know, kind of across the board, but with a, a focus on service. Um, and we want to just elevate our guests' experience by bringing high quality cocktails with a beautiful design, kind of in a cozy atmosphere that has prices that are affordable to all, not only the people that are moving into the high rise buildings, but local locals that have been here, you know, for, you know, 40, the past 40 to 20 to 30 years or whatever. We don't want to price anyone out. And we, we feel that this relationship with Noah will give us that opportunity. Um, combined, we have over 50 years of hospitality industry experience, um, working with the likes of Todd English, uh, Garrett Harker and Jackson Cannon with the Island Creek and Eastern Standard Group and Barbara Lynch and John Gertzen from the Drink, drink uh, Cocktail Bar. Um, all of us are, are TIP certified, experienced in um, sort of, you know, proper alcohol serving, you know, certification, all that. Um, and I don't know if there are any questions for, for an, any of us, um, we'd be happy to answer them. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And thank you for that description and for um, spelling it out for us. And thank you, Attorney Upton. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Saxon or Commissioner Curran, do you? I don't, thank you. Not at the moment, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter, beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, members of the board. Molly Griffin from Office of Neighborhood Services speaking on behalf of my colleague, Nina Tremelli. Um, just to reiterate what was said previously, this applicant does have support from the, sorry, Maverick MCNA. Um, and they also have received support from Councillor Edwards' office. Um, our office has not received any further letters of support or opposition um, since their meeting with the MCNA and since those letters were received by the city councilor. Um, at this time, our office would like to go, oh, sorry, would like to defer this decision to the board. Thank you. Thank you, Molly. Thank you, Molly. Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this? Um, uh, yes, hi, I'm Maria Eugenia Corvo, direct a butter. I can actually see the restaurant out my window right now. Uh, the restaurant is a fantastic concept, a wonderful addition to the neighborhood. I am sick and tired of seeing a vacant space. I do, however, have a couple of concerns I wanted to share with everybody, in particular regarding the request for a 1 a.m. Oh, uh, the applicant be a good neighbor and respect the quality of life of the many abutting families in this very predominantly residential area and consider starting with an 11 p.m. license, which is much more in, in keeping with the current closing time of their other location, irrespective of what the actual license says for that location. And also, I'd like to ask the applicant, the property owner and the property manager to specifically guarantee there will be no additional traffic of any kind, loitering or smoking in the driveway that separates the restaurant from my house. Um, and finally, I'd, I'd like to ask the same stakeholders to work with us neighbors uh, to get the city to bring traffic calming measures to the corner of Porter and Decatur. That intersection is currently extremely dangerous. Our family got hit a couple of times, almost, almost. Uh, and with increased pedestrian traffic and increased car traffic, uh, that will get worse. So this is actually an opportunity to actually get the city to do something about that. Um, I also want to say for the record that um, there, there was a meeting with the Neighborhood Association, but there was no uh, actual about a meeting. That's why I'm sharing this feedback um, in this venue. Um, but look, look forward to trying the food. Okay, thank you. The next hand I see raised is from a Mr. Mintzopoulos. Yes, hello. Let me lower my hand first. Uh, 
so I would like to echo the same sentiments. Uh, I do feel that this would be a wonderful addition to the, the region. Uh, I do think we need a great restaurant in the area and we're all up there. I do share the concern about the late 1 a.m. closing time. In keeping with the residential nature of the neighborhood, we feel that uh, 11 p.m. would be a lot more appropriate. There are many families living in this area and in these buildings um, all, all around, and uh, many of them with many very young children. So a potentially noisy environment would be very disruptive. And uh, I would like to also share the same concerns. Uh, I know this is not directly incumbent on the applicants, but we do have those issues with traffic. We have been complaining over the years a lot about that, and we would welcome the applicants um, and you know, our support in raising this issue again and hopefully get a better resolution, which I think would be beneficial to all. And lastly, the concerns would be issues that have uh, again, uh, you know, come, have become issues again, have been discussed also with previous owners, making sure that the area is very clean. I would like to stress that in the private driveway behind, um, the families come out, especially, you know, in the summer or good weather, the children can play uh, until late. And so we would not want to have, for example, people who might be smoking, or you know, breaking a glass or having any kind of litter in an area where children might play, and obviously they can you know, dumb, uh, hurt, hurt themselves. So we we really would like to make sure that um, uh, the applicant uh, makes a commitment to keeping this area clean, safe uh, for the working families, and going back to the issue of the uh, one a.m. closing time. And I'll stop there. Thank you. Can I um, address a couple of these questions? If you can briefly directly address. Um, as far as uh, the, the driveway area is concerned, that would um, that would not there would not be any traffic from guests of the restaurant. Uh, would, the only use of that back door would be for employees of the restaurant, um, whether it's to take the trash out or loading and unloading um, shipments, which would occur during the day. We would try to keep our guests on the border street side of things. And as far as the smoking issue, which I understand, I mean, um, I've thought about maybe we could put signs on the building, no smoking within 25 feet, maybe across the street where there's that park, we could provide a smoker's pole or something and ask our guests to, you know, if they would like to go smoke a cigarette across the street, keep your, keep your uh, voice level at a minimum, you know, and respect your neighbors. Um, we really don't, we're not trying, we're, we're a food, food first focused restaurant. Um, we're not trying to get a late night scene. Um, one o'clock would be the latest on a weekend, possibly. We are just, and we're not guaranteeing that we're gonna stay open that late. We're just seeking the one I am. So later on, if the community desires us staying open later and offering food later, we have that option and don't have to go back to the board. Um, you know, uh, we, we did discuss at the Maverick meeting, you know, the, the patio will be closed around 930, 10 the latest on weekends. Um, we're trying to keep our, our goal is to keep noise to the minimum for for the direct the butters, of course. And as far as traffic is concerned, we are not marketing really. I mean, granted, it would be great if people come and travel, but it is a you know walk up traffic type of restaurant for the community and there's so much development and a such a huge influx of people in this neighborhood we need more and more places like this thank you for your time uh, thank you and thank you for addressing the smoking issue that is currently a concern on our driveway we collect cigarette butts all the time and because we are right behind the restaurant, that is a really big concern for us. So the commitment to no smoking within 25 feet of the restaurant in any direction is um, is greatly appreciated. Great, thank you. The next hand raised, I see is, oh, great. I see a hand raised from Michael Underwood. Mr. Underwood, you may, I'm asking you to unmute. Hi, uh, uh, I'm sorry, can you hear me? We can hear you. Please state your name, okay. address, and any affiliation. Yes, uh, okay, I'm Michael Underwood. I live at 78 Liverpool Street. That's in the Coppersmith condominium. Um, 
and um, I'm, I attend the Maverick Central neighborhood meetings as often as I can. I just don't recall this being discussed in that meeting, but probably I missed it. I, I'm not sure. But I wondered whether the abutters in the uh, Coppersmith condominiums could have their own special uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, I don't recall uh, any other notices about this other than a, a, a uh, registered mail that was delivered to me that uh, unfortunately the Zoom uh, meeting address was uh, not uh, visible. Um, so uh, there was no survey or anything done other than I, Noah is involved. And I wondered whether the, uh, the uh, direct abutters, uh, aside from the Neighborhood Association, Maverick no could be have their own Zoom meeting with, with the uh, new management of this place. Uh, Molly, I see you have a hand raised. Yeah, I, I don't know if you want me to respond. We have hired a new East Boston neighborhood liaison in the mayor's office neighborhood services and we usually run those abutters meetings for this type of process. I feel like the predecessor left in the fall so maybe this one fell through without her having to do one or being able to do one before she left and I was unaware so that's my fault but um, I can work with the new liaison on doing but that would mean the process would have to be delayed a little I don't know sorry this is like a conversation I Molly. Yeah, okay. no, and we um we understand your office is going under a lot of transition the administration is going on under a lot of transition so uh no fault of your own um why don't we it sounds like the people on the zoom here are open to and the applicant are open to working together um perhaps we can get that scheduled sooner than later Sure. Um, Attorney Upton, um, you and your uh, client, um, do you think you'd be able to work quickly with this group and and uh, meet with them even um, in an immediate Zoom way? Work with Molly to set something up. Sounds like they're, uh, they're open. Uh, yes, Madam Chair, we'd certainly be glad to meet with with the neighbors. But I, I do want to make clear that we met with MCNA on September fifteenth. We got a unanimous vote. Uh, in favor. And on both August 27th and August 31st, I contacted Lena Tremelli and asked if we had to do an abutters meeting. And she said, let's see if you get strong support from the MC. Okay. So no, I, I understand. We're certainly that's willing to do yeah, additional Yeah, that's exactly meeting. what I thought happened. I, that's exactly what I figured happened. Um, we deferred to ONS's um, guidance and professional um in, in their their professional opinion and their uh, relationships with the community to determine those types of things but it sounds like we got two parties here on the zoom that are using this hearing as an abutters meeting so i just think it would be more fruitful for you guys to work those things out not um you know before the licensing board it sounds like people are willing to work together i know we have more people that would like to testify i see hands raised so sort of hashing all this out in a public hearing I'd, I would like to move on through the agenda and ask that you guys work together. I'm not saying that you did anything wrong or that ONS did anything wrong. I understand what's going on, but I would like to move forward and let other people testify and hash these things out privately. Right, I, given the fact that there is no opposition stated or otherwise to this, I would suggest that perhaps the board could go ahead and vote tomorrow based on our commitment to work with Molly, and just so we don't lose time in the process. Thank you, yeah. Um, I just wanna go move forward with the hearing. Um, is there anyone else uh, who wishes the, to the, speak on this? Uh, the, uh, the immediate abutters are, are not all in the neighborhood association and uh, many of them were just completely unaware yeah, that's what, of what that's was what, going on right behind. That's yeah. what is concerning and that's why we, I, I appreciate that and that's, I also have that in the forefront of my mind. Um, this is what sometimes happens. So I think we have a, an applicant here who is willing to sit down and hash out these concerns and listen to you. They sound like real quality of life concerns as opposed to operational concerns. Um, so it, it seems like a very simple solution um, to have the two groups work together. 
M Madam Chair, Peter Gorey, I represent NOAA. We will commit absolutely to host a, a, a meeting with the abutters, period. Great. And, and, never, and I, I don't think this needs to hold off our vote tomorrow because it sounds like both parties are um, willing to collaborate and work together to make sure that uh, both the abutters and the overall neighborhood is happy with the operation of this um, licensing. Thank you. Thank you. And I did see Mr. Giffey with a hand raised. Did you still want to wish to speak on this? Yeah, uh, briefly. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. So uh, we're Noah. We're down the street. I won't take up too much time, but we're very happy to sort of bring this uh, team to the table. Uh, I've lived in the neighborhood or worked there for uh, more decades than you can count on one hand. Uh, we remember that, or some might remember that it was an old industrial uh, yard before we took over and made it into a mixed income, mixed use neighborhood. Uh, uh, a place for people to live and own as well at the same time. Uh, we had somebody else look at this years ago and say, what do you need to build a restaurant? They said 3,000 square feet, give me an outdoor porch. They couldn't take it, but other people thought it. And now the, the line people have stepped forward and I think done a very good job. I know we did have the neighborhood meeting, but there's been a real transformation in the neighborhood, but there's nothing on that side of, of Border Street, which re or offers people, I would say, newer quality food where they can go and relax at the same time. So I know we're happy to work with Maria and Dionysus and Michael on, on the smoking issue, on the traffic issue. I almost got hit in Central Square the other day. A guy just ate his truck right at me. This happens everywhere. We've heard this concern before. If anything else can be done with Molly or the new team, we'd be very happy to have that happen on Border Street and uh, Liverpool Street. So we're very happy to welcome the team here. I know they'd be happy to have a neighborhood meeting. We look forward to getting this going as soon as possible. We've been waiting for years to make it happen. So it'd be a welcome addition to the neighborhood. We're happy to work with you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And if there are no further testimony at this time, we, uh, Mr. Matthews, did you just unmute yourself for this? No, okay. Then we, uh, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now calling item 20, so Dexo Operations LLC doing business as Lufthansa Business Lounge located at 500 Logan Airport E in East Boston has applied for an airport common vigil or seven day all alcoholic beverages license to be exercised on the above 6,796 square feet business lounge located within terminal E of Logan International Airport providing food and beverages to airline passengers. Premise is one story with a kitchen and a dining area. The seating count is 132 and the legal occupancy is 347. There are four entrances and exits to the premises. Manager Kendra Lombard, closing time 10 p.m. Who is present on behalf of the applicant? Hi, yes, Amanda Taylor is here on behalf of Sodexo Operations and also Kendra Lombard, I believe, is on the call as well, the manager. Great, you can go ahead, Ms. Taylor. Um, yeah, so this is an application for the Lufthansa Business Lounge. It's already existing there. Um, there was another food and beverage provider there previously. Um, Sodexo is now taking over the food and beverage operations. So they're applying for a license. The premises um, previously had a license there under another operator. Um, there's no changes to the method of operation or um, premises at all. It's this, um, pretty much the same business there, just a new food and beverage provider. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, and the manager of record um, is you, Ken, is, is Kendra? Oh, sorry. Are you already approved by this board? Uh, yes. Okay. All right, thank you. I don't have any questions. Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon? None for me, thank you. I do not, thank you. Okay. Thank Are you. there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Are there any other individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you. Now calling item 21, AHF Speedway Holdings LLC, doing business as Charles River Speedway, located at 1420 to 1440 Soldiers Field Road in Brighton. Has applied for a common vigil seven day all alcohol beverages license to be exercised on the above 10,325 total square feet on two floors located at ground level and basement 1,555 square feet. 16 total rooms for meeting office space, retail, food service, and three bar areas, full service restaurants with guest seating and main dining rooms on both levels, 3,688 square feet of outdoor space on private property, year round weather permitting, outdoor closing hour midnight. Lastly, has petitioned for approval of separate management agreements with Superbian LLC, TKC LLC, and Birds of Paradise LLC. Manager Marcos Doyle, closing time 1 a.m., Attorney Kristen Scanlon. Attorney Scanlon. 
Good morning again, Madam Chair, members of the board, Kristen Scanlon, representing the applicant. With us this morning signed on is Marcos Doyle, who is the proposed manager of record for the establishment. Um, Marcos is actually a previously approved manager, um, not in Boston, but by the ABCC for a section 15 license, just so the board is aware. Um, the request before the board this morning is for a new license, which was created for this particular site via special legislation in December of 2020, when it was signed off um, at the state house. Like many others, um, this particular project has had a series of COVID delays with construction and some programming for the site, but we now look forward to closing the loop on the activation of the license for this site. By way of background, um, the Speedway is owned by the Architectural Heritage Foundation or AHF. Um, it is a Boston-based 501c3 nonprofit, which was originally formed in the late 60s to help save local architectural icons such as Old City Hall. They were previously the long-term stewards of Old City Hall through a long-term lease administered by the BPDA. And since uh, its inception, AHF has been dedicated to the preservation and economic sustainability of historic resources within the community. Uh, they're definitely a mission-driven organization ready to step into complicated and long-term projects just like the Speedway where conventional developers might turn away. Um, the Charles River Speedway headquarters was originally built in 1899 and is located at Western Avenue and Soldiers Field Road. Um, it's been a complicated project, but it does have a unique place within local and regional history. Um, it's made up of six contiguous buildings built around a courtyard. And while it has served many uses over um, the past several um, decades, centuries, uh, it's been vacant for years until AHF took it over. So the proposal is, or has been, um, a redevelopment plan that has involved the full restoration of the Speedway buildings into a vibrant community gathering place, which will be anchored by um, one main restaurant, a tap room and the courtyard itself. It'll also include artisan workshops and retail bays or stalls, mostly um, all under or well under 500 square feet, which will create opportunities for local vendors to connect with the community. And they also offer um, office space as well. They've really created a wonderfully dynamic creative marketplace that is well underway for the community to gather, eat, drink, shop, relax, and connect. Um, by way of background, Marco says the general manager for the site has two decades of experience in hospitality between Massachusetts, New York, New Orleans, Las Vegas, working in restaurants and hotels. Um, he has, um, as I previously mentioned, experience owning and operating a section 15 uh, store in Ipswich and um, oversaw the food and beverage program at the Plaza Hotel in New York City, was also a restaurant supervisor at the Mandarin Oriental in Las Vegas. So his experience is definitely varied and expansive and a wonderful addition to oversee the retail programming for this particular site. Um, as far as details of the two businesses that have entered into management agreements so far um, with, with the Speedway, first is um, Super BN, which their core concept is the sale of empanadas, but they'll offer an expanded menu, um, a South American tapas menu serving primarily South American wines. And in one of the stalls, it's approximately 460 square feet. The other is a 256 square foot stall um, by the Koji Club, which is a sake bar they'll offer packaged snacks and small bites and they are completely built out and um, ready to go and, and eager to open up to the community. Um, we are in the process of working through a third um, management agreement and we'll come back to the board um, when that's completed for the anchor restaurant at the site. Um, as far as op hours and days of operation are concerned, the proposed hours are 10 to 10 a.m. to 1 a.m. daily with a midnight outdoor um, closing hour. Because this is a new license and as far as public need is concerned, um, the Speedway is activating a long vacant major site and they're really activating it with an incredibly community driven purpose. In addition to obviously the food and beverage operators that they've signed on, They've also signed on a salon, an ice cream vendor, a houseware store, and they have already um, hosted and will continue to do so uh, several community markets, including Black-owned Boston, Vintage Markets, the Boston's Women's Market, 
yoga events in the Cambridge Art Association, even as a residency. Obviously, um, given that information, that it's very telling that the focus is on local businesses and local vendors and smaller spaces, which is really a win-win for the operator and the community alike from an, from an affordability and convenience standpoint and really gives people an opportunity to connect with their neighborhood and the community and showcase their talents and offerings. Um, the Speedway has really painstakingly restored a community resource um, while answering existing and new demand for amenities and services along the Western Avenue corridor, including um, several hundred um, residential units that have come online within the past few years, including directly across the street. Um, the license will give ultimately tenancy greater chance of success by reducing upstart costs, which we all know for restaurants can be quite enormous. And it will really secure into the future, um, which is a huge advantage circumstances change with the food and beverage tenants. At the end of the day, it's truly an economic development tool and levels the playing field for smaller operations to have a chance again to showcase their businesses in an affordable and visible way. As far as community outreach is concerned, since 2014, um, the Speedway and AHF has, have held nearly two dozen meetings with local elected officials, stakeholders, residents, abutters, um, including in addition to city council regarding the, obviously the redevelopment, the site specific license that was created by the, le the legislation. Um, we know obviously, cause we were copied on it as well. The board received an email this morning um, and first and foremost, I want to just say we've, we're incredibly appreciative of um, the neighborhood organization's ongoing support and collaboration with the Speedway's efforts to get this project off the ground. Um, and of course, 100% defer to the board, but would respectfully request that we're allowed to proceed um, with a vote on this matter, um, given that the overall plan with the 22 meetings that have been held um, has not changed for the plan for tenant operators, retail and restaurant activation that would occur within the marketplace that was being created by this redevelopment at the site. Um, and hasn't changed in the community presentations or presentations before city council um, and through iterations of the license um, legislation that was ultimately approved. So with that being said, we're certainly happy to continue to meet with BAIA or ACA and any other organization who would like updates on the programming for the site and happy to commit to um, any meetings that they have scheduled for next week or the week after to um, provide those updates. Um, again, we do have tenants who are ready to go and whose livelihood depends a bit on this proceeding and are eager to open and, um, to the community and close the loop on full activation of this long planned site. Uh, appreciate your time. I know that was long winded, but it's an important site and I feel like the details um, were important on that today and happy to not take up any more of your time and answer any questions or concerns the board might have regarding the proposal. Uh, thank you, Attorney Scanlon. Um, before I get to um, my manager of record questions, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Doyle. This was a very complicated application. We've been working with him and the team for several months on this, going back and forth between the ABCC and our office and the management team trying to figure out um, where the alcohol would be served and enjoyed by patrons. Um, and I wanna appreciate your patience with us as we try to um, work with the ABCC and figure out um, how this would all um, shake out at this location because it is so unique. So with that, uh, Mr. Doyle, your, um, your attorney did describe your, your lengthy experience in the food and beverage industry, but the other three questions I wanna get on the record. Um, are you a citizen? I am. Are you a resident of the Commonwealth? I am. Um, and are you familiar with the rules and regulations of this board, the ABCC and the laws of the Commonwealth as they pertain to the sale and service of alcohol? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you. I don't have any questions about this application, Commissioner Curran or Commissioner Saxon, do you? I don't either, thank you. I don't, thank you. Are there any individuals who would like to testify on this matter beginning with elected officials or their representatives? Yes, Madam Chair, members of the board, Connor Newman with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. At this time, the Mayor's Office would like to defer to the judgment of the board. Uh, by way of some background information regarding the community process, the Mayor's Office conducted a butters meeting on May 23rd of 2019. Uh, that same year, uh, the applicant also presented to the Brighton Alston Improvement Association and the Alston Civic Association. Uh, since then, as the applicants alluded to, there's been a lot going on regarding the pandemic and other setbacks uh, for the project. Uh, the BAI has offered their support and feel comfortable with the proposal going forward. 
Uh, the Alston Civic Association leadership has expressed concerns about this board taking a stance before their membership has heard all the details regarding the most recent proposal. Uh, I see representatives on from uh, Rep. Mike Moran's office and Councillor Braden's office. So I'll, I'll defer to them as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I see a hand raise from Councilor Braden's office and Rep. Moran's office. Um, Councilor Pamelani, you would like to go ahead. Good morning um, and Happy New Year, Madam Chair and members of the board. Uh, this is Pam Mullaney on behalf of City Councilor Liz Braden. Um, Councilor Braden would like to go on the record and acknowledge the hard work of the former City Councilor Mark Siomo and Representative Mike Moran, the Ar Architectural Heritage Foundation and others who brought this development to the neighborhood. It stimulates community growth and cohesion and importantly supports small businesses. Uh, the development has recently sponsored pop-up events in the courtyard, is visible over social media to the community. Um, as the representative from Office of Neighborhood Services um, described, there has been community process. Uh, Councillor Brayton has reviewed the um, history of the meetings from 2014 to 2019. There is a bit of a gap in connection with the Austin Civic Association, um, mostly during the pandemic, um, since the September 2019 meeting. So, Councilor Braden will offer support for the application uh, and ask the board to consider a proviso that the board delay approval until the proponent goes to the Austin Civic Association this month and discusses the special speedway license and legislation, as well as the separate management agreements with Super BN and Birds of Paradise. Uh, Council Braden believes it's important for the members of the Austin Civic Association and neighbors to understand the details of the restaurant and bar operations. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jen from uh, Representative Moran's office. Thank you so much, Danny. And uh, thank you to Chairwoman Joyce as well. Um, Rep Mike Moran, who represents Austin Brighton, the 18th Suffolk District, um, wrote this legislation that helped make this entire project viable. Um, and there was a long legislative process and it was ultimately passed and signed by the governor in December of 2020. He supported that legislation and advocated for that legislation back then and obviously still supports the project to this day. Um, in particular, because the Speedway has been, you know, really great, fantastic community partners. They've organized food drives and resources for their neighbor, the Charles River Health Center during the height of the pandemic. They have uplifted small businesses and especially women of color through their pop-up markets. And they have also contributed to the local toy drive and donated space to local community non nonprofits. So we, we um, ask the board for their support. Thank you so much. Thank you. I see a hand raised from the BAIA. You may unmute yourself and go ahead. Okay. The BAI has worked with the Speedway since 2011. The BAI supported the vision for the Speedway to support small businesses and its vision to make it easy for them to operate. The Speedway went through the process to have a special license to operate. They came back to the BIA in September of 2019 to update the status after they were approved by the city council. At that time, we had no concerns. Since then, uh, Notch Brewery did come back to the BIA for a separate license, which we also approved. But uh, we look forward to uh, having uh, the Speedway support small businesses under this umbrella license, uh, and we are in support. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional individuals who would like to testify on this matter? Seeing none, the board will take this under advisement. Thank you, everybody. Thanks so much. Thank you. And those are all the items before the board today. So thank you and have a great day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.